I'm here with Sean McGordy, who just qualified for the finals of the men's 3,000 meter steeplechase with a time of 825.95. I'll start with this. Just uh, walk me through your uh, assessment of that competition and that race for you. Um, I mean, first K or so kind of just felt normal. It seemed like Isaac wanted to uh, set an honest pace from the start. Um, my race plan kind of <laughs> got thrown out the window when coming out of, I think it was the second or third water jump. Um, I got a flat tire. So someone stepped on the back of my right spike and I tried to hurdle a few times um, and I thought it was maybe going to be okay. But after two barriers, I was like, I need to try and put my shoe back on. There's no way it stays on. So um, on the back stretch, after I cleared that barrier, I pulled out wide and tried my best to <laughs> pull the spike back on. I think it took a little longer than I was anticipating and the pack got a little farther away than I was anticipating. But um, from then on, just tried to just keep squeezing and just work my way back up. Um, really thankful for just all the different Bowerman fans and just the entire energy of the stadium. I feel like they really rallied behind me and I was able to work off that. Um, ideally wouldn't have been right in that ninth spot, but that's all I was able to work up to. So just thankful that it all worked out and I was able to get the time qualifier. Yeah, this first question, I'll be asking questions on behalf of the media. First question is from Adam Kilgore. Uh, just what was your thought process on when the shoe came off and how do you approach that strategically? Like you said, first you tried to run without it, then yeah. you made a decision to put it uh, back on. I mean, so I've seen it happen before. Um, you know, I've, I've heard stories of people going either way. Some people just flick the shoe off and they just run, but especially with it being a prelim and, um, you know, the track being so hot, I really, I was a little worried I was going to mess up my foot, especially with having a hurdle and do the water jump. That would have, uh, that wouldn't have felt too good. So I felt like in this situation, I really had no choice, but to either just try and keep jamming my foot into the front or I needed to stop and put it back on. And um, I just felt like I was going to be the most relaxed and be the most efficient hurdling um, and going over the water barrier with my full shoe on. So um, <laughs> that 200 meters definitely had a lot of thoughts, but then it just kind of had to just make a decision, go with it, and then just really rally. Um, I think it, you know, it helped knowing I was also entered in the 5k, but this was always kind of our first plan. So I really wanted to, to fight as best as I could. And I feel really fortunate, like I said, that, you know, it, it worked out. Yeah. So this question from Jonathan Galt touches on that. Why did you choose to run the steeple here? And, um, you know, why did you choose to do the 5k as well? It was going into that. Well, I think, um, you know, fortunately with the schedule, you can, you can enter in both. And I think the mentality was kind of why not enter in both in case something like this happens. Um, you know, fortunately I was able to make my way back up, but in the, uh, in the scenario that the second heat had gone faster and I hadn't made it in, we wanted to have another event that we thought I'd just be equally as competitive in. So, um, yeah, I think training's been going really well. I think Jerry and I feel confident with where I am at um, steepling and also in the 5K. And so I think, you know, it's just kind of a, a blessing to have some options. And this is the event that was first. So we wanted to uh, get started with the steeple and see how I, I felt with everything and then kind of go from there. Yeah, this question's from Kevin Sully. Um, talking about being on the bubble, um, yeah. having to watch that second race and hope that it was slower. Uh, when did you know that you had qualified? Um, I mean... Even going into the last lap, you, you never really know because, um, I mean, people close sub 60 all the time. But I think around um, 1,200, 800 to go, I started to feel more confident. Uh, you could kind of just tell the way the pack was situ situated. It was a little more bunched up than I felt like ours was. I felt like, you know, Isaac really strung our race out pretty quickly. And so since people were still like three or four wide in their group um, heading into the last 1,200 and I was just watching the clock, I felt fairly confident and I think um you know it just kind of worked out that the heat kind of dwindled to the top five um without really needing a huge last lap so I think probably the last 800 I was feeling good but I don't think you feel good until you see the times up on the screen and uh you can kind of let out that sigh of relief uh this one's also from Jonathan Galt does running 825 despite a lengthy <laughs> break that was about 10 seconds give you any extra confidence ahead of the final um Honestly, it hasn't even come into my mind. I was a little pleasantly surprised when I saw how faster he was. I think, I mean, it, it felt like it was going to be honest from the beginning, but I mean, once, yeah, once the shoe came off, my mind was just on pure catch up mode, was not looking at splits. Um, I think it makes a little more sense why it felt like it was taking so long to catch back up to them. Um, I think I learned a lot and I think it's, it's good to know. Um, 
you know, that I, that I am strong. I'm definitely thankful for those solo steeple workouts. I think that kind of helped me stay relaxed and channel that. Um, but yeah, I think I'll take 825 with a, with a shoe coming off. Another question from Adam Kilgore. When you lose a shoe like that, is there a risk in panicking and trying to catch up too quickly? And was it tricky to figure out your pace? Uh, I think there absolutely is a risk. And that was something I tried to tell myself on the backstretch. And, but it's such a fine line because you can't be too patient, especially when it's an honest race. Um, you know, I don't think you can expect people to come back to you. It's kind of this fine line of squeeze gradually each lap. Fortunately, you know, as people kind of fall off the pack, you have, you know, you have some positive reinforcement that you can use um, to build momentum. But I think absolutely, if I had sprinted the next lap, I think I would have probably could have been fried. So I feel like I tried to approach it as, as patiently, but as urgently as possible, kind of just riding that line between the two. Yeah, another question from Jonathan Galt. Now that you are in the steeple final, uh, do you plan on starting in the 5K prelim? Um, if I had to guess, probably not. Well, I'll talk through it with Jerry. I mean, that is the benefit of having it on Thursday. But, um, you know, heading into the meet, we did, we kind of wanted to go all in on the steeple. And I think that's still the plan. Um, I don't know if something will have changed after he watched this race. But I think my plan is is to go all in in the steeple. But um, I, haven't, I haven't seen him yet. We've got some pretty important finals for our team coming up. So, I'm sure that'll be a conversation later tonight. Okay, and uh, we'll give pe people a few more uh, seconds to type in questions. <laughs> Got a question from Adam Kilgore again. Uh, will, will you practice putting your shoe back on? It looked like it took you a couple tries. Uh, it took me, it was, way, <laughs> it was way harder than I thought it was going to be. I think just from tying my shoes so tight for when I'm in the water, I like, I was really confident. I was like, okay, you can stop. You're just going to pull it right back up and you're going to be totally fine. And I went to pull and it was not coming. And there was, there was a little panic there. Um, so, you know, thankfully I put some Vaseline on the back of my heels. Cause I don't know if it would have come up as easily without that. And it was pretty hot out there today. What does that do for you race wise? And you still ended up running a really fast race with the whole group. Despite yeah. The I mean, I was pretty impressed that it ended up being so fast. I thought it would maybe be a little slower to start, but Again, I think Isaac's in really great shape. So I think he, you know, I think maybe after yesterday, seeing what happened with uh, Courtney, um, just when it's a slower pace, you introduce, you know, the chance that weird stuff is going to happen, either with the water pit or getting tripped. I mean, of all the things that could have happened, this is probably one of the more minor. Um, so thankful it wasn't anything serious and my body's fine. But, you know, I think it shows that everyone's in good shape. And no matter the weather, I think it can be a fast and honest race. Awesome. Uh, thank you and congratulations. Yeah, thank you very much.